Well, uh, uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Thank you, everyone, um, for uh, coming out uh, tonight. Um, the uh, the second item on today on the list today is adjournment. Actually, yeah. so uh, we're we're going to postpone that one. <laughs> okay, man, we're done. Okay. Yeah. We can start to help the meeting get over. Fast, yeah. Right. So, uh, so anyway. Um, so we're going to uh, review and uh, approve the agenda. Um, I think there uh, may be an item that we need to pull off of the consent agenda, but we'll talk about that then. Um, and I, I know that we have a request um, that was otherwise not on our um, agenda, and so we'll do that sort of rolled into general business and appearances. And that's fine. Um, uh, but other than that, I think there had been some addendums, but I think they are all online. So, um, does the other half of the room like to have lights? Would you, Would you like the lights on? Do you like the lights on, Mac? Just turn. Okay. Cool. You look dark. <coughs> Super. <laughs> Very dark back there. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're gonna. So w without uh, any objection, uh, we'll consider the. Uh, agenda approved, and we have a very first item to go with general business appearances. Yeah, could, could Chief Robert Gowans come forward? Sure. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm looking around the room, and I think I can tell. But quick show of hands: how many of you here are under 40 years old in this room? Okay, then for your entire life. <laughs> Robert Gowans has been in the Montpelier Fire Department. We're going to present him his 40-year pin, serving us as a firefighter, deputy chief, and now chief of the That is a long time to be dedicated to our city, and we appreciate all your work. <laughs> Thank you for all your work, Bob. Appreciate all you do. All right, so. So when I told you you had to come to the meeting tonight, now you can go. <laughs> awesome. All right, so um, other general, general business and appearances. Okay, we're back in business. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Zach Hughes. I'm from the Prospect Street neighborhood. And I rise for many uh, reasons tonight. Um, and uh, one of them is, first, I want to thank um, Chief Vakos of our Montpelier Police Department for making himself available for our uh, local standing committee at Washington County Mental Health right here in Montpelier. We spoke for about in about 45 minutes or, or 30 minutes or so, something like that. It was a long dialogue and it was very productive and, and we hope to continue the dialogue in general throughout the city as we um, continue to move um, forward and uh, learn from the events of early, that early August morning. Um, I also, so I want to thank Chief Pecos for that and uh, continue to show support for the Montpelier Police Department. I um, also um, would like to announce that uh, my volunteer-based organization, which I'll send information to you separately, has uh, separate of the task force, I repeat, separate of the housing task force, has launched a street team which is dedicated to um, responding to uh, needs of people on the street who may need uh, such supplies as sleeping bags, tents, so on. Um, so we are starting that out, little venture, and we, we've been getting uh, donations here and there, which is good, and we'll continue to do that. So I just wanted to announce that. Again, that is separate of the task force, so I don't want there to be any confusion there. Um, and once more, and I uh, would like to just close um, by thanking the city of Montpelier for being open 
uh, to the climate protests that we had um, last week. It was um, rather interesting, but I will say I appreciate the openness of the city. Thank you very much. Good evening, Richard Shear from Loomis Street. And I've come tonight on one of these questions I come every so often on, and that's information, getting information from the city in a timely basis and an organized basis. And I want to hearken back to one time that it wasn't me, it was my wife who was here, and the question was street closures for events, uh, which at the time was fairly haphazard. Events would show up and no one would know that the street was going to be closing downtown. And the city council put together a, along with the police chief, put together a form and people circulate that form to those who are involved. And it's a process that works and it works really well. And it works because it's predictable. You know exactly what's going to happen when. In terms of information requests that come in to the various city departments, particularly the city that's coordinated by the city manager, what I would like to see is you guys be informed of the information requests that are sitting before the city manager. Just a simple spreadsheet that comes to you saying, here is who the data request was for, from, here's what the data request is for, here's who's going to handle it, and here is the estimated time, and here is when I got back with that person saying what the estimated time would be. Just systematizing that process the same way that we systematize street closures. And I think a lot of the misunderstandings, you know, that data is being withheld. No, data is not being withheld. But if you know when a date certain is that it will arrive, it just makes the system work smoother. And so I would recommend to consul to recommend to the city manager a log that would go out, if not in public view, would go out to you guys with your city council preview package that comes before these meetings so that you're on top of what the citizen concerns are that are coming to the city. I mean, you know when someone has touched Connor or Glenn or Donna or whatever, but you don't know the kinds of concerns that are coming to the department. And that helps you to really be better city, city council people, in my estimation as a non-city council person. And that is all I have to weigh in on tonight. And I think that was constructive. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Um, good evening. My name is Ken Russell. Um, I'm a new member of the new housing task force. Um, and what did I just call it? Housing. That's related. Um, so homelessness task force. Sorry. And yeah, whatever. And um, but thank you. I know almost all of you, but not all of you. Um, and do appreciate your good work and appreciate um, you letting me serve on this. And we had a fantastic meeting. Um, first meeting, a lot of good energy, a lot of focus, and a lot of uh, adaptability. Um, and we, at the end of that good meeting, um, we, we went around the table and how are we going to work together, how are we going to form, but we were like, there was a sense of urgency expressed unilaterally, and we came together of one mind with the request in front of you to open up the shelter early. Um, we did not include the springtime, and Bill very astutely pointed out, well, maybe we should consider that as well. So um, we thank you for your consideration of this. Um, and I just I just want to talk about uh, acting in time. I, I went to graduate school. The biggest program they ever had there in public policy was acting in time. It was right after Katrina. And they brought in people from all over the country to talk about how do, does government respond in time to meet the needs of the people who are out there. And um, Steve Whitaker has done a lot of really good work and continues to do a lot of good work bringing this issue out. The, the people from the homeless community um, really doing a lot of fantastic work. Um, um, 
people from the business community raising concerns and people I've talked to in that community are interested in being part of the solution here. Thank you, Rick DeAngelis, for showing up to consider what um, opening the shelter early might look like. Um, Steve put together some numbers there and I'm sure you as the operator know what it would take um, to consider. And I just, you know, I just want to say this is a good example of a community taking care of itself, considering everybody's needs, acting with good process and mutual respect. And so um, that's all I have to say. Should, did you all know what I'm talking about? I so think we're going to get to it in more detail. <laughs> oh, did I start well, get up the wrong point? No. So this item, it was came up so fast yeah. that it was not put on our agenda, nor was it added as an addendum. And what this means is that um, I think if we're going to, oh, I'm not sure that you've been very, I, I would love for you to be I, really clear about if you're asking the council we're asking, something. We're asking, okay. Um, um, and, and this is the item I was referring to about um, something has come up, we're going to deal with it during general business and appearances, so that's right now. Um, so, if you could be very clear. Right, does so somebody have the language? Yes, you have the language I, I think I do, hold on. Um, and forgive me because I think part of this is, is my, uh, I may have confused you with, with how I, it was distributed. Okay. But yes, let me, let me find You're cutting me slack. You're cutting me slack. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's all good. So, uh, the Homelessness Task Force came up with a resolution. Uh, it was unanimously approved uh, and it was... Uh, Here we, uh, Do you have it, Rick? Yeah. Okay. Would you come up and share it? Fe Thanks. Feel free. I, I, this is, forgot the dog and the pony for this show. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay, I've got it. Okay. Um, the, the Homelessness Task Force makes the recommendation that the city take any action necessary, including identifying available funds to open up the Bethany shelter as soon as possible and staff it until the Good Samaritan contract begins. We believe that that contract begins on November 15th. And that is the, the full text of the motion. And, that's, and I will forward it to you, John, yes. And I, again, I apologize. This is all happening very quickly. Um, it, you know, our committee, I mean, Steve made this motion for, uh, with four minutes to go of our meeting, and we pulled it off. Um, and we appreciate the fact that we're sort of throwing stuff on the, you know, out to you all very quickly. Um, the charge of our task force was a longer-term perspective, but it did not preclude us acting more quickly. And the, there are certainly folks in that room unanimously felt the sense of urgency to keep things moving um, with a dynamic action. So thank you for your consideration and understanding and apologize for any clumsy steps. <laughs> um, so, Gia, so just for clarity, actually let's, before we d take this up any further, are there any other items um, for general business and appearances? Okay, so. Um, related to this or not related? Separate. Not related to this. So I'm just checking to see if anybody else has anything else uh, that they yes, want. I, okay, that's not related to this. I, uh, yes, it's not related. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> Th thank you, Ken. We'll come, we're gonna circle back to this, to this issue. Hello, my name is Seth Collins. I live in Berlin, Vermont. And uh, I would like to see the construction and implementation of a feminist neighborhood watch, as there's a serious problem with predators, obviously, everywhere. But specifically, my range isn't much greater than Montpelier, so I don't see or hear many other stories. But I hear a lot of horror, literal horror stories. And I would like to see this council and all, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting emotional, but all, all branches of government of local governments to confront this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, can he explain that to me? Uh, maybe everybody else knows what he means? No, if you want to ask Could some you, questions. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. See, your neighborhood watches probably went, went the way of the wayside and I don't know when, but they're not. You see a lot of uh, 
signs that says the neighborhood watch has like an eye on them and the signs are all worn down and not not upgraded so, but so i would like to see essentially a neighborhood watch is a number of individuals they sign up for it they're given some sort of training and i guess there's some sort of network where they're, it's networked together in a web. So you would you would say maybe, I mean, Montpelier isn't broken up into blocks, but I believe it's broken up into districts. You'd have every district would report to an individual, then apparently possibly report to City Hall or to whatever government. And then that is, say it, say it was someone a dog was barking loudly, then that of course wouldn't get reported to the to the to the you know to the police. But if something if there was something where a crime, someone was being hurt, the money was stolen or what not then then that would go on to the police and then be processed that way it's 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 sort of a way of of uh it's sort of a way of bringing justice faster because often often in this town um there will be someone getting smashed through the wall of their own apartment and then by then you know th then it becomes an issue well if they're in theory this is only in theory if theory if, in theory if there was a neighborhood watch then these Theoretically, these things would be some of these things would be intercepted before it got to the point where where someone was uh, was in a serious serious risk of bodily bodily harm or injury. And I'm sorry that was no, so no, long winded. No, no, but no, I'm, no I'm, I really I I'm, just yeah. I, I, the essence yeah. is what I'm hearing is okay. that you want us to organize yes. a neighborhood yeah. watch more formally with training, etc. Yes. Okay, I, mean, I got it. So it, I, yeah, I understand. Oh, I, I understand so uh, is there some is. sort of a network? I mean, you were telling me you wanted to implement something in the future, but is there is there anything like that functioning w at all now? I don't believe so. And just to clarify, um, Seth and I had had a conversation about reviving the capital area neighborhoods. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a right. thing that I would like to talk about when it comes to um, budget time. Um, so that's uh, something that, um, at least, you know, moving into the right. future, um, I, that that sort of idea could be wrapped into the capital area neighborhoods. Um, anyway, yeah. Yes, I, I I just wanted to put my my spin on it that it would be specifically, in my opinion, focused on on intercepting predators and protecting the innocent as 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 to me like when people hear neighborhood watch they don't automatically interpret it as that way they more interpret it as as lo looking out for people that are generally suspicious when i would want this neighborhood watch specifically to target specific, specific accounts of 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 uh a specific, to tar target specifically target rapists and and and, uh, and imprison them or send them send them away because this this town, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, yep. the, the, this town is too precious and every town is too precious. Every life is too precious for us to let this happen. Th thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Um, general business and appearances. Uh, I want to raise one that is overlaps with a later one, but a number of folks in town have recollections from decades ago that a city center was being uh, permitted, developed, improved, that there were conditions that those bathrooms be available to the public. Someone else even had recollections that par the parking garage was to be accessible. Uh, I've made records requests to build passed to Miller, Mike Miller, and I'm getting told now that I have to pay, I have to either, the onus is on me to go find those conditions. And I'm saying the onus is on the city. I've offered to search for them and create an OC, a searchable PDF, but the city should pay to scan that file so that it is searchable. But if the city is losing track of conditions, uh, just through staff turnover and time, uh, it's pretty important that public restrooms not be uh, lost in the fog of time. Um, so I made the proposal to Bill that the city have them scanned as they did with the, trend, the parking structure documents uh, at Capital Copy, and I'll turn them into searchable OCR and, and do the research, no, no charge, to determine whether or not. It may, there may be some handwritten stuff that needs to be transcribed, permit conditions that came out of development review, design review, uh, but that's, that's a pretty serious thing to overlook. And the fact that numerous people in the community have expressed this recollection means that I would kind of count on City Hall to keep track of it. 
Uh, I've separately had a conversation with uh, our public works director. The bridge uh, needs some, the bike path bridge needs some signage. Uh, there's a young lady down there now who got hurt. The bike coming up the hill, you had to, had to get her momentum up and the turn came so quick she ended up hitting, hitting the rail. Uh, separately, garbage is not being collected and dozens of pounds of it are falling down the riverbank. There's not, there's not even a proper garbage can up there on the circulation route for the contract. Um, those are the most important being the, the next one, the more important. Sorry, Stephen, just before you go, wh which bridge are you talking about there? Yeah. Bike path bridge behind DMV, the so-called oh. pocket park. Next and that's the there. same place, I will remind you, where some of the homeless were har harassed in the middle of the night. They had to have been staked out because there's no one around there to report a public urination, which was the alleged crime. But it, I believe we have some people, we've got some vigilantes in town that are rousting people and saying, you can't sleep here in the middle of the night. So be aware that that happened yesterday or the day before with the vigilante. But, and we had a, a former cop uh, reported twice to still be throwing his weight around here harassing the homeless. So those are things that you should take very seriously and no one since I've mentioned them has come back and asked for details other than buying bills. Call us, Thank you. Uh, any other uh, general business and appearances? Okay, so I'm circling back to uh, the request that uh, Glenn read. Um, I'm sure there are um, some other folks. Well, so so, do you do you want to speak any more to that? Um, I think uh, apart from not actually reading the resolution, Ken did a good job of expressing our uh, uh, unanimity and uh, sense of urgency on the task force to at least try to um, get this. Uh, service available as soon as possible. Um, beyond that, I think I would like to say that uh, I really appreciate the work that Good Samaritan and Haven is doing, and I'm very glad that the, the Bethany shelter has been open. Um, and uh, I want to be able to work together as much as possible to... to um, continue and expand that service as possible. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that both Rick DeAngelis and Rob Farrell from Good Samaritan have come tonight to share their um, sense of the, the possibilities and, and the information that they have on uh, the, the shelter as it has been run. Um, Beyond that, I know we're going to have to have some amount of conversation about this, uh, and I guess I have a process question whether it makes sense for me to make a motion at this point uh, before we get further information or whether we should have some open conversation first. I think it's fine if you want to make a motion, and then um, I, w I will say, though, it was not on our agenda. Yes. So... I will say it, it does make me a little uncomfortable to have a motion, yep. particularly around money that we did not warn. Yes. Um, that feels. I'm just going to be candid and yep. put out there that I would make a motion to table, like, and, and not because I disagree with the idea, but because I think I've been sort of on my trope for a while about like making sure that people have an opportunity to weigh in and participate, um, and I, I. I can see how some people might categorize this as stonewalling right now, but I, I feel pretty strongly that this is something that we really, as a community, need to have a real conversation about. And um, it's something that I want, um, I want people, one, to be aware that the council is taking this seriously. And I feel it would be, uh, it would undermine our integrity as an elected body and, you know, as people who are here to try to fix this, to sort of go about it in a way where we don't have um, a, a firm plan in place so that people can look at that and say, okay, I know that my council is working for me and working for those that are most vulnerable in my community. So I would, I would ask that we like sort of, uh, one, 
I feel a little blindsided and I don't feel well, so I apologize that like I'm a little off. But um, I guess I, I'm not really clear. So I caught the 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 ask is that the city operate the shelter at Bethany Church between now and November, or whenever the whenever we would vote on it, and November fifteenth. Is that? Yeah, the, the, so the way it's worded and the way I understand it, we would be directing staff to find a way to open the shelter. That, in my mind, um, and as I understand that the task force's uh, idea is uh, more or less however that works. I think that there uh, is some... Uh, probably some some reasonable preferences for the city not to do any more than it has to itself. Uh, for example, if the city can assist Bethany, uh, that is, I'm sorry, uh, assist Good Samaritan to, to open earlier, that would be my personal, uh, that would be fine with me. Um, I don't know if that helps answer your question. I guess. I mean, so I just, I... I want to make sure. So, so in essence, it's a question. So the the goal is we want to open the shelter ASAP. Yes. That, okay. Yep. That's and exactly then right. The the path to that is yes. is what we are, are are figuring out now. So yes, I would definitely make a motion to table. I there's no motion to table yet. Well, there's no motion, Stephen. But I appreciate your candor and your commentary from there. Um, but if you were to make a motion, I would certainly make a motion to table that. Understood. Um, uh, I'm going to, unless you want to respond. Uh, Lauren, you had something to say. Um, this all being new to me, I think the goal seems great, and we should try to move forward expeditiously. I was just looking up the average temperatures in October at night, and it's 27 degrees in Montpelier, so that seems cold for people to be out. Um, I'm wondering process-wise, like, how... I mean, do we at this point have a, like a budget? How long would it take to get staffing up? And I'm wondering if we could put a request to Bethany Church or whoever the right entity to come back ASAP with a detailed proposal of how exactly this works that we could then have like publicly warn, have a process and improve, like knowing exactly what we're um, so signing up for. I can respond to that just based on these inquiries. Bethany Church has said they would be willing to open they don't provide staff themselves so as long as whoever is funding and doing this they would be willing to open earlier um, and obviously they incur some of their own expenses and would like to be reimbursed for those but they're they're not huge and we've talked with good Samaritan and I think the real issue I, so I'd be clear we don't have the staff or resources city to do it if, if we were directed to do so and I don't have any strong feeling why we wouldn't be but we would want to have good some of the people are going to be running it all winter do it so that i think what we're talking about is how much does it cost for how many weeks and appropriating that much money that's that's really the issue if the, if the church is willing and, and i don't want to speak for good samaritan but their executive director is here so i'll let him speak for himself whether they're willing or have the the ability to do it that would be the most expeditious way to accomplish this i would think so my understanding from the conversations i've had is that there is not a solid plan, though, for this to happen at least yet. Should we just stand how prepared we are? Sure, yes. Steve, could you stand back in the microphone, please? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I was chosen to present from the, homeless, the uh, Homelessness Task Force. Yep. Mr. Whitaker doesn't respect boundaries. I'm what I'm. You I were could, done, and I had a different issue. I, my understanding is they're discussing right now whether to table the motion that There's I There's no present. motion. You didn't make a motion. He didn't make a motion. Stand back, please. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hi, uh, I'm Rick DeAngelis. Uh, I'm the board chair of the Good Samaritan Haven. And this is Rob Farrell. He's the executive director. Uh, we're really glad to see the interest for addressing the needs of the homeless. Uh, you know, I've been in Montpelier for 30 years and been involved with Good Sam for a long time, and it was always a Barry organization, and we were scratching our head, how do we develop interest in Montpelier? And lo and behold, here we are tonight. It's amazing. Um, 
So that said, uh, we are glad to try to, you know, to work with this interest and to open the shelter earlier. Um, it's, a, it's logistically challenging, I'll say that. Uh, we have to hire staff. Uh, you need a lot of staff to fill in a graveyard shift in which you're awake all night. And, um, you know, maybe volunteers, but it's, we find that it's, uh, it's usually better if we're hiring people for reliability and so forth. Uh, and then there's plus we have our own, uh, you know, staff uh, overhead and so forth. And then there are the co costs for the Bethany Church. So we, you know, back of the envelope, uh, based on a few telephone calls, uh, seven to ten thousand uh, dollars for a month uh, of operating the shelter. And uh, we did talk with the state of Vermont, and we asked them if if they could contribute. Uh, and extend, uh, I mean, we have a contract that'll be starting late in November. And um, they said no, uh, uh, but they said they might be willing to talk about whether there's some flexibility in that. But the immediate answer was no. Um, can I ask you, um, is, is it your perception that there's, well, actually, maybe this is a question for the task force, but um, is there a perception that there's a greater need on the front end of winter or on the back end of winter? That's a great question. Uh, first of all, hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, I would offer both. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd Donna. like him to repeat the cost. I heard 700? 700. 7,000 okay. to 10,000. Okay. And like so I say, much. that's 10, the back 000. of the envelope. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we yeah. came up yeah. with no, that. No. Uh, I just didn't hear the number, hours. obviously, so thank you. Yeah, about three hours ago, so. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, it is expensive. There's staffing, there's insurance, there's the Bethany's costs and so forth. Uh, Ashley. Uh. It was profound in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll think of it in a moment. It'll come back. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to say very quickly, if I could, in, in light of the, the uh, circumstances of arriving at this conversation very late in the game, I do wonder if we're not better off thinking about extending the season uh, and, and moving the direction of the conversation towards that and then looking at next year opening up early. It came to me. Uh, before we before we go, I um, just want to um, express sympathy with that idea um, that uh, now is I mean we we can uh, we could probably push to get something you know ready for uh, before November, uh, but now is a great time to be planning for the spring and and having conversation about next year, and two I think you know just knowing what what the, the situation is with the, uh, with the warming shelter and how it's been going and are, you know, are they meeting their needs and um, you know, what, what can be done there. So thank you for that. And Ashley. Yes. Um, so one of the things that I feel as though uh, I think a lot of communities have really fallen behind on is you know, we need a short-term solution, but we also really need a long-term plan. And um, one of the things that seems like you know the money piece is something that we as a council have to have to make a decision about i think to me that's a larger policy question not just a ten thousand dollar check question um, but one of the things that has always sort of struck me as an area where communities really could step in would be how do we you know obviously this is a service that from my perspective we need because I care about my community and I care about the most vulnerable members of my community, um, is sort of where are the deficiencies in terms of long-term planning around how to uh, address food security, to address um, any sort of unmet um, physical needs, medical needs, all of those pieces that, frankly, as someone with a significant medical issue that's ongoing right now, like, you know, thankfully I, have learned how to advocate, you know, for myself. But it strikes me that there is a lot of a really challenging systems to navigate. And one way that I would really urge the city to engage in is, you know, what do we have in terms of resources that? And I don't mean paper. Paper is super helpful because you have to fill out trash forms, and I'm going to call them trash forms because I've about had it with like forms to fill out for different medical providers or whatever. And you know, one of the things, you know, I don't, I'm not, 
comfortable just throwing money at a problem because I, I don't think that's what a council or a, a community can do to actually solve a problem. But I want to put on the radar that to me, the seven to ten thousand dollars to to get this this up and running early is is an imperative. I certainly want to make sure we have a solid plan in place, but I also want to make sure that this seven to ten thousand dollars is is going to to yield a positive a net positive return for everyone who will be utilizing that and so i i don't want anyone here to think that throwing money at this and just opening this shelter is the answer because it is so much more complicated than that and um, i think that's another way where the city has lots of resources you know um, that, that we can use and we have a lot of people who care about what happens here and so i i just i I know, I know good Sam in Barry does, you know, does some work around that. And I think that we in Montpelier have a lot of, of resources at our disposal and um, it would be short sighted and frankly negligent of us to not think long term about this. And the seven to $10,000 is frankly, from my perspective, an easier ask than, than the, you know, how are we going to meaningfully change some of these really problematic social structures that are in place that perpetuate the cycle? You know, I, yeah, here, here. But for seven to ten thousand dollars, you keep somebody alive and out of the totally. cold. Listen, and I that's, get it. And you can't do much more than that. Yeah. Be, uh, I mean, and that's what this emergency shelter system that the state has developed and encouraged basically does. Not a whole lot more. You can connect with some people and work with them on a service plan. Um, but this is such a terribly complex structural problem that we have. Um, and whether that means a committee from the city, you know, organizing volunteers to like help fill out forms with people or w whatever it might be, or even just compiling a list of therapists who are accepting new patients or treatment providers. I mean, I've been calling treatment providers and they're telling me three to six months for an appointment. I mean, that when you're talking to someone who has immediate unmet needs, that is insurmountable. I mean, what's the point in continuing if, if you're not going to get any anywhere anytime soon? So if I, if I can just remind everyone in, in the conversation that when we formed the Homelessness Task Force, um, I think in the draft of the memo, we talked about sort of the limitations on the city's ability to address all of the root causes of homelessness. And we charged the task force to come up with some short-term solutions that we could implement quickly and then to do exactly what Council Member Hill said is then use the time to think about ways to deal, and we specifically talked about ways to help people navigate the system and other things and, and to look think strategically but also understand that you know the winter is coming right uh, and it's going to get cold and people are going to be out there so I you know I, I think there it's consistent with I think we agree that the, the, the city council agreed when it formed the task force with exactly what you're saying I'm just saying this is a really unique opportunity though that if we are able to figure out a way to to move this forward I see a way that that this part could also kind of get wrapped up in, in a sense in that and you know your time is your most valuable thing in life that is what I have learned in my recent weeks and you know as someone who has slept in a parking lot in my car before, like seven to ten thousand dollars is is a lot of money, but it, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money. But it's a meaningless amount of money if we aren't going to put our moral money where our mouths are and and actually change this. And so, I you know I, I don't see this as something for the council to you know take take a backseat role in because we set the tone we set the tone for how we engage with our community and how we engage with members of our community who don't live the same way that we do and I, I think that I, I wouldn't be comfortable voting for a plan just to approve a, a budget for this if, if there were to be a motion that came to a vote but there would need to be like an actual you know this committee will will come up with a list of suggest you know and, and I see it as more of a, we need to do this. And so for me, any sort of funding request would also have that built into it because a funding request by itself is, is just that, and it's only temporary. Uh, Connor and then Donna. Okay. Uh, just two quick questions. So I, I think you said it already. How much earlier would this open the shelter? 
17,000 votes? A uh, yeah. A month. I mean, that again, we're ballparking that figure. <laughs> we figure about that much for a month of operation. But okay. don't hold him to it. <laughs> well, I mean, we just found I out know, about I know, this. I know, I understand. <laughs> and, Bill, easy question for you. Where would this money come from? <laughs> uh, you know, I haven't had, this has been waiting for the number, but um, so we'd have to look for it. But I, I suspect we could, you know, we could find it somewhere. I don't know, fund balance or something. I mean, we, it's, it's probably within the margin of error of a paving project or something, you know, so. I mean, I'll, I'll just say, like in our last budget, we appropriated some money for child care at city council meetings. Sweet. I don't think we're ready for prime time at that, so I, that's something I'd be willing to suggest we push back to next year. That's $2,000 right there, right? I don't know if we could add up to it like that. Donna. I, I know we haven't decided what our dates are for October, but I, I would like to direct staff as well as the committees to come back at our next meeting and for all of us, hopefully give us information before the city council meeting and that we all come with more information and an idea of how to go along this path, which we are interested in doing, but we need the details. How much lead time would you need to get going? To come up with a plan. To, to, from, from the time we say go to the time you can open, how much lead time do you need? Uh, we would like as much time as possible, uh, at, at least a couple weeks at the very least. So if, if, you know, if our next meeting is October 9th or 16th and they want to open October 15th, I'm just, I'm not trying to push this. I'm just yeah, going to make yeah, sure yeah. people understand the yeah. consequences of the choices. Regardless, um, I think it may make some sense nonetheless to um, ask folks to work together to come up with a plan. and. Knowing that that, um, I, mean, I would trust your um, collective judgments of, about, um, you know, whether that means, you know, we're meeting on the 9th and we're going to open in a couple, like a week after or so, or if that means, um, you know, the trade offs are such that it makes more sense to do it for the extending the season or whatever. I will leave that to you. I, I mean, if I, I don't know. It was that a motion, Donna? By the way. Well, yes, I was sort of put out there for a feeler, but it seemed yeah. to me. Let's say we went, said went to the next meeting. Let's say for sake now, it's the ninth instead of the sixteenth. The committee would probably have to meet early if you meet only monthly. We meet once a week. Oh, meet weekly. Okay, so that's great. So that would give everyone two weeks, and I think that's what we need: information. And likewise, Bill can help nudge the budget and give us some ideas there and uh, let us get really real about this. I also want to add, if I could. Sorry. Um, was, okay. that a, was that a motion, Donna? Okay. okay, John, I'm talking to you. All right. <laughs> so the motion is that the city council puts this item on its October 9th agenda or the very first October meeting we have, but I'm hoping it's the 9th, and that the committee and the providers will, and will come forth with Im more information and more clear numbers and likewise staff will come back with more options of where we could find money should we decide we want that. Is Second. that clear enough, John? I may have to go back and check that. <laughs> okay. I think it had multiple seconds though. We can um, co-second. I'm cool with that. <laughs> All right. Um, I, yeah, I, it looks like you both have something yeah, to say. And I, and I just want to, we have a, a ground rule that uh, there could be dissenting opinions. Um, I was asked to present. Um, Steve obviously has lots of thoughts on this, um, which is great. Um, but I, I do acknowledge this was an ad hoc, last minute thing. So it was with uh, goodwill and sense of shared sense of urgency on the issue. I think we can work well together. Steve did send some numbers to me, which I sent to Bill um, based on his math. and. Of course, the operators of, of the shelter are the ones who really understand what it takes, but we they appreciate considering the advocate position on this. Steve, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we worked, we busted our rear ends to get the numbers to Bill in time to meet the 24-hour agenda threshold before this meeting. So the fact that nobody has the numbers that were prepared. It was about 8,400 without this. I did speak to pastor of the church, Amy, and they have no intent or 
awareness that this is going to be a recurring year after year thing. They did it as a one time thing and now they're being asked to like pick up the slack uh, and their board met last night to consider this request. Apparently they granted this request to open early. But the fact that you have the numbers and that we've got pregnant couples, disabled people sleeping in the streets and you're going to kick this can down the road because the n numbers weren't circulated from Bill to the city so, council. So I, I got to interrupt you here, Steve. I got numbers from you that you calculated that you said. I pulled them directly from the, the Good Sam budget with OEO. Uh, the I, I understand that. I, I spoke to Mr. Farrell this morning after receiving your numbers, and he said, I don't have numbers yet. I'll have them at the meeting. Okay, but so, we don't have so to I, use Good I, Sam. I, we could hire people that have done this okay, service we, before. For, well, we can argue about it or not. I'm telling you that I relied on the organization who provides the service to provide me with budget numbers. And as of about 9 o'clock this morning, he told me he did not have them and would have them at this meeting tonight. Okay, but this I appreciate is part where you got yours, and in fact, they match. This is part of the problem, is that... Stephen, I apologize for interrupting you because I hate being interrupted myself, but I'm going to ask you this question. Is your goal to make this happen, or is your goal to argue about who is right? My goal is to make it happen immediately. Well, immediately is not an option right now. So the option is we can either collaborate all together, or we can continue to waste there's, time and fight. There's enough hot air in this room to keep these people warm. Well, Mr. Whitaker, maybe there is a, a bit of self-reflection that needs to happen there as well. Okay, we, we have, there are people who are not allowed into the Good Sam system. There are people who uh, have a no, I met one tonight who is under a 12-month no trespass order at the Bethany Church just for having slept under a bush and with no warning. So there's all kinds of holes in the system. So for y'all to think that, you know, the provider has this all wrapped up is absurd. You know, I've asked, I've done records requests. The provider's not willing to share where the half a million dollars that they spend goes. That's a problem. There's an accountability problem. We need to look at other opportunities to staff these emergency okay, shelters. Well, I am telling you that the city is not going to be able to pull together staff in two weeks to staff a shelter unless it's through an established shelter provider, period. I'm also telling you that no matter what system or who's providing it, there will be people who fall outside the cracks. It's, a, it's sad, but it's what happens. There are going to be people with no trespass orders. There's going to be people who mis misbehave. There are going to be people who get kicked out of places. It's unfortunate, but regardless of who's providing it, that's going to happen. It's not going to be a one-size-fits-all. As I understand it, the rules at Bethany are, more, are looser than the ones in Barrie and are more accommodating to people, and that has been happening for the last two years, okay? The city council, the elected officials here in the, of the city have said they want more time to study this and get better numbers and get a recommendation of where the money's coming from. That's, they haven't voted, but that's where they're headed. Arguing over whether they had the money or not, but for you to say we had numbers, we didn't have numbers from a credible source, and that is no disrespect I, intended to you. I'm a credible source. All right. Uh, so uh, there's a motion and a second on the table. Um, any further discussion? And then I'd like to move on. Yes. Um, I, I'm afraid. I, I feel like I'm in a difficult position, and I, and I also want to apologize to the council that that, that this did come up so uh, quickly. Uh, part of that, I think, is. Uh, certainly something that I can take some, some credit or blame for. At the same time, I feel, um, and, and forgive me, Ken, if I'm stepping on your toes here, but I, 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 think, I think I would be doing the task force a disservice if I did not uh, reemphasize um, in words other than Stevens, excuse me, Stephen, um, our sense, our shared sense of urgency. And from what I've heard so far tonight, uh, the council is fairly unanimous, although we haven't heard from every last person, uh, on wanting this to happen as soon as possible. I've further heard that the Good Samaritan folks are willing to, to, to work with us and that the number is not likely to be large. Given that our October meeting certainly may uh, be delayed by a week. Um, I would prefer uh, to, to 
move ahead immediately, get council uh, agreement to, to ask Bill to start working on this now so that we can start uh, on the 15th with no, with no problem. Um, again, I'm, I have trouble with who makes motions when and how to do it best, but if I can, I'd like to make a motion that we you can't make a motion. Right? Can't make a motion. Okay. Make an amendment to the motion. So, uh, in that case, I would uh, move to amend the current motion uh, to uh, uh, approve the homelessness task force's recommendation as it stands and uh, move forward as soon as possible. Is there a second? Can we repeat the current motion on the table. Yep. Okay. John. John's going to repeat it. I mean, then the <laughs> to approve the homelessness task force recommendation as it stands and to move forward as soon as possible. That's Do you mean? That's the, that's the, that's the amendment. Yes, yeah, an amendment. Did you mean Donna's? So it, it would. I meant Donna's. He meant the original motion. Not the yeah, the original. Motion. All right. Now that's the one that went on a long time and I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to the tape. The core check. suggestion was that the council would be looking at this. Direct staff. We were going to be looking at this yeah. because we're going to get feedback from the committee in two weeks and from the providers and from the staff to look for the money. And I just, I would just mention in the future, because you guys are big rambly with the motions, <laughs> under Robert's rules, the motion needs to be tight enough that theoretically the presiding officer can repeat it back before the vote. And these motions that go on forever, I can't, I cannot capture well, them. Well, there are three, to three parts to, to my motion, uh, actually four, that the next meeting, city council will consider funding additional time at the homeless shelter, but we need to hear from the committee, from the providers, and from staff. Is that clear enough, John? Oh, I, it's clear. I just okay. don't have no. the exact language. Uh, I was trying it to went give you some exact short time. So name. that's a change to your motion. I did not understand that. I'm sorry. If you, if you prefer it even, I was trying to make it real. <laughs> well, then you'll have to give it to me again because it sounded like you were just explaining your motion. I'm serious. I, okay, I mean, okay. I don't know. I don't know no, how else no, to tell you. No, okay. okay. So, likewise, that at the October 9th City Council meeting. You may not want to tie it to a date. Okay. At the next October Jesus. City Council meeting. Fair enough. Okay. We considered the request to fund the opening of the homeless shelter early. Okay. And that at that October meeting, we hear from the homeless shelter committee task force i'm sorry homeless get the right name task force the providers at bethany and from the staff on sources for funds okay so at next October City Council meeting, we consider the request to fund the opening of the homeless shelter early. And at that October meeting, we hear from the homelessness task force, the providers at Bethany, and from the staff on sources for funds. Does that answer your question, Connor? Um, is there a, so Glenn made an amendment. Is there a second? Okay, so hearing no second, the amendment dies. Um, and so there's a motion on the table, which is um, Donna's motion, which is what was just read. Lauren, did you have something to say? I think sort of a question. Um, so if we don't vote on this until October 9th or 16th, like obviously it sounded like there was a number of steps that need to happen of pulling together a plan and a budget. If the goal, you know, with it seems like there's general um, agreement that we we want to move in this direction and we want to provide a, this service for longer um, like what would be held up by if we don't officially approve this until say October 16th like what kind of timeline would it then take to post jobs or do whatever it would take I'm just curious how is how long weeks? are we is it two weeks to a, well I heard two weeks to kind of prepare the materials to, to like get a real solid budget and plan in place but then I assume also there's like posting jobs and things that then then happen so I'm, I'm just wondering if we wait for beyond you know if it's three weeks from now or whatever like are we how far are we pushing things before like we'd actually be able to open I, I don't know if that's so, an answerable 
So yeah. Question. So when I said two weeks, it, it was in the spirit of, of having a very ambitious goal and, and a sense of urgency that I'm feeling in this room. We welcome the opportunity to collaborate with everyone here in this room and, and very much here, the folks of all differing opinions. Uh, we will be hard pressed to open up the shelter in two weeks. I cannot be any more clear about that. Two weeks to come up with a solid plan and, and then, you know, we are actively already hiring for the shelter, but it'd be very difficult for me to come before this council and say we'd be ready to go on the 15th of October. Uh, Jack. And that's if we approved you now. I'm sorry? And is that if that is, that, and are you saying it would be difficult to do it for October 15th, even if they said go right now? It would be a very ambitious date, yes. Okay. Um, did you have something to follow well, up? So, so just so I'm clear, so this timeline for what, from your perspective, it will take to actually make this happen anyway. This doesn't really slow down anything, assuming, um, you know, if we then vote at the next meeting to approve this, it would kind of be happening on this timeline anyway. Yeah. Or, or are you somehow hamstrung in anything that you would otherwise be doing if we don't with uh, this motion? Yeah, I would leave this room with the same sense of urgency that I walked in with, and that if I could put together a team and everything that goes involved with opening the shelter on October 15th, we certainly would. Uh, however, we just are not in the position to make any guarantees right now. Thank you. Uh, Jack, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to say two things. One, I think that it's clear that you, you can tell from the discussion of the council that there's a sense that we want to make this happen as soon as possible. And so you're not going to wait until our let next council meeting to start doing the things that then starts the two week time period you're thinking about. Um, and so as a, as a good manager of a organization, you're going to be working on what, uh, what can be done to, to put you in a position to do this work. Um, I also want to say, uh, in my professional work, I've been uh, had con connection ties with and uh, worked with people at the Good Samaritan Haven for for decades, and I think that uh, they have uh, done great work. You have done uh, when there were problems with the, with the city of Barrie and zoning and everything. The Good Samaritan Haven stood up to the city to make sure you could provide the. Uh, services that you need to provide. I was at the uh, event last Friday night. I think it was uh, a good event, a good uh, cross-section of, uh, of the community and people that I have never seen at that kind of event before. And I think that uh, Rick was right, that this kind of outreach to get support from people who live in Montpelier is an important part of what you do. The Good Samaritan Haven is an organization that needs money and needs to raise funds to uh, provide services. And uh, and I don't think um, the criticisms made in the handout that we uh, were just given are uh, have any validity whatsoever. I'm, I'm going to support this uh, motion. Now I, I'll make a commitment that uh, we'll get out financial information as soon as we can. We won't wait till the next meeting. So if we can put together, you know, where we think we can get it, or if we can't, uh, we'll get that out as early as possible so that planning can move ahead. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. And, and really, thank you to the committee for all of your work on this. I mean, even though it's pr maybe not as fast as you'd hoped, I mean, it's without you, it wouldn't probably be happening at all. So very grateful. Um, so um, look forward to hearing more from you all. Thanks. Sorry it wasn't what it should have been on it's time. It's okay. No, no, it's fine. I, I understand. And thank you for your graciousness. Okay. So before we start the agenda, yeah. one other thing. I, I was so excited to give Bob his pin that I was remiss to introduce Lisa Maxwell, our new executive director of the Montpelier Development Corporation, who's here visiting us this week. For those who haven't met Lisa, she's here. 
spending her week in Montpelier and clearly knows how to have a good time. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so you're starting in, in full in the beginning of November. We're looking forward to having you here. But uh, even in the interim, she's been great to work with. So looking forward to having her. Thank you for uh, recognizing me. And welcome, Lisa. Uh, all right. So on to our regularly scheduled agenda. And, and Mayor, I just wanted yeah. to let everybody know, um, I had reached out to you earlier. Yeah. Uh, I am going to leave at some point during the meeting. I, I have surgery scheduled for next week. Um, so if our meeting is the week after that, it, if, if it is, I will be here for at least one topic. But I just wanted to put out there that if I get up at some point, yeah. it's OK. It's anticipated. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, uh, so on to the consent agenda. Um, was there, what, did you want to pull a particular item? Uh, is Donna here? I know we got, we're having a major water leak now. Oh, uh, so I, I guess I just want to quickly pull, um, yeah, I'm getting Rex's just here. Yeah. We just want to quickly pull, and, and I don't even know if you need to really pull it, but I want to mention the Berry Street night paving. We did discover that we had neglected to send notices. We, we noticed the people from Granite Street to Main Street, uh, where the mayor and others live, but not from Granite Street out, which is actually where the paving is going. But there aren't that many residents there, but nonetheless, there are residents. So we were going to suggest that you, we, but we'd like to stay on schedule that you approve this, but that it with the condition that we notice, and we're actually going to get the notices out tomorrow. But before you heard about it, that we hadn't provided notices, we realized today that we hadn't, and we wanted to make sure that you knew that we knew and that we're owning up to it, and we're going to fix it. So perhaps, uh, so that's item C. Do you want to uh, certainly? Or, or we, I mean, we're going to do it, so you don't necessarily need to pull it okay. if you don't want to, but we wanted to make sure that it was addressed. That, okay, that we're going to yeah, the notices send going those out notices. ASAP. Okay. Uh, any. Uh, anything else about the consent agenda? I just mentioned that the minutes from the meeting, the last regular meeting, Peter Kelman's name has been corrected to, to be spelled correctly, and the correct name of the Social and Economic Justice Committee is now Okay, thank you. Is there a motion regarding the consent agenda? So moved. And we approve it. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, so that passes. Uh, and uh, so on to the zoning. I know we advertised it for 640, and we are 45 minutes behind. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, welcome, Mike Miller, our planning director. All right, good evening. And I'm Mike Miller, and the director of planning for the city. And so um, I won't go through the whole um, deal again to keep things uh, brief. We've gone through this a number of times. Uh, so this is the second uh, public hearing for the zoning fixes. Uh, the only change that I wanted to make sure I pointed out was that uh, after the shortly after the last public hearing we had, and this was, I believe, uh, Jamie emailed it out to you and we put it on the web with the list, there was a map error that was found at 242 Elm Street. It's one of these things that under the zoning rules, we would be able to go and say lines that are intended to follow property lines shall be interpreted as following property lines. In this case, we found one that when they were drawing the line, they followed the outside of the barn and not the property line. So it's in the wrong place. So we're going to interpret it correctly anyways, but we figured with the open hearing, we would just go through and say it's a, just a technical fix. It's not a substantial fix, but that we would correct that map. Um, as well for that one parcel um, and if there are any questions on that I could answer it but uh, other than that uh, everything has been online all the, and the red line changes if there are any other questions Jack did we open the public hearing no but let's do that now thank you we're gonna officially open public hearing <laughs> so this is a, a second reading of uh, the zoning changes thank you any other questions regarding the zoning? Okay. Uh, any comments from the public? Okay. Oh, yes. Good evening, Joe Castellano, 3 Sabin Street, Montpelier. Um, and I was made aware this afternoon that Phyllis Rubenstein had sent some comments, an email to you. 
and I just want to make sure that you shared those comments with the council. I certainly did not, um, because I've basically not been able to check my email since, uh, I mean, I teach between yeah. one thirty and 3, and then I, like, basically have wall-to-wall -wall meetings until I come here. So, I mean, I, I was at a meeting at 3.30, so I did not, I've not even read this email. I saw I had it's an email late. from someone named Phil, or Dang Philip. You. But I could forward them to people now if uh, you would like. I, I can also just read them off my phone that if you would want. Be fabulous. Okay. Uh, she, this is verbatim. Dear Ann, I was unable, and this is on behalf of Phyllis Rubenstein who lives over on College Street. I was unable to attend the city council meeting two weeks ago and uh, am unable to attend tonight. As a met resident of the College Hill area, I am writing to voice my objections to the proposal by Casey Ellison to modify the zoning districts in St. Ben's Pasture. The parcel in question is a fully wooded hillside, very much unlike the open pasture uh, in the Zorzi tract. I attended the community meeting uh, Dr. Ellison held at the Kellogg Hubbard Library in the summer, at which time she shared that she is not obtaining bank financing for the proposed bathhouse. She was also unaware that she would need to have access uh, to the building for emergency vehicles. She plans to build a 45-car parking lot uh, below the building site on the wooded ridgeline and seems unaware that the slope of the pasture makes it unsuitable for such an impervious structure. She hopes to get an easement from the Zorzis for a portion of the street driveway from Berry Street to the parking area, but she had not yet contacted the Zorzis. She has no concrete plans for phase two, the proposed building of apartments or commercial space on Berry Street. She suggests, she, yeah, excuse me, she suggested that she would have to obtain phasing, uh, financing for phase two. I am concerned that Dr. Ellison lacks the knowledge or, and skills of the developer and project may well fail. Assuming the city council changes the zoning lines and the project subsequently fails, the property will remain open for development in ways not allowed under current zoning regulations. Please share my concerns with the council members. Thank you. Thank you for okay. sharing that. Okay. Any further uh, comments from the public? Yes. Yeah. I'm curious to know what what exactly structure this person wishes to build. If if it were uh, if it were these these uh, four hundred dollar a month housing units, then I'd be all for all for her building something like that. I think uh, all of that is um, there's no proposal yet on the table, so that's all sort of yet to be discussed. And um, this is um, really just about what will be allowable on that space. Okay, yes. yes. So. All to be future conversation, but thank you for raising it. Uh, okay, any further comments? Okay, uh, so I'm going to close the public hearing, um, and I think at this point uh, we could use a motion regarding the zoning changes. I move we appro uh, approve the proposed zoning changes as presented uh, tonight with amendments. There's a second. I'll second. <laughs> Further discussion? I would make an amendment that we approve the zoning changes and separate the request to change the property line. On the, the VCFA? On the VCFA property. Is there a second? So removing that, removing that particular piece from the, approve, the other zoning right. proposals. Is there a second? Okay, um, so the motion or the amendment fails for lack of a second. Um, uh, any for, yeah, Jack. I understand the, uh, the concern raised by Phyllis Rubenstein. Um, my opinion is that those concerns are not really zoning concerns, they're really permitting concerns, and uh, if the uh, property owner uh, applies for uh, a permit to cr construct uh, this project, there will be plenty of opportunity for, uh, for that uh, project to be reviewed. And so I'm going to support the amendment, or er, support the motion as I articulated it. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, so the motion passes. Thank you. And uh, thank you for all of your work. And, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, so we have a couple appointments to be made. Um, one to the Community Fund Board. And um, Michael is here. If you want to come up and tell us about, I know you've, you've introduced yourself before and we all know you, but uh, Michael nonetheless. I live in Montpelier on College Street. Um, I'm not going to take a long time because you're behind schedule, but I uh, just want to bring to your attention that what has happened with the Community Fund Board, and I was initially very skeptical about it, but I think what we have done is uh, helpful to the, the citizens of this, the city. Um, we've been careful to create a uniform application so that everybody's on the, on the same, doing the same thing at the same time in order to get their money. We've uh, also created, I think, a, a good uh, standard for um, a, accountability so that the, we know and therefore the council knows how the money that, that's been appropriated from city taxpayers is being used and that it's fulfilling the, the obligations that people take on with their applications. I've been on, this is the, uh, the end of my first term. Um, I've been totally active with it. It's a very short period of time that we work. It's intensive, but then we're done and you have a, you have a, a budget item to put on the budget. And I would very much appreciate being appointed again. Thank you. And I'll answer any questions if you have them. Any questions? Okay. Is there a motion regarding this appointment? Uh, Connor. Yeah, I'll, I'll move we reappoint Michael Sherman to a three-year term on the Community Fund Board. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you for your work in this and so many other areas. Um, okay, so um, the other appointment that we have is to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Uh, Kirby Keaton was stepping down as the rep, and I think it was Marcella Dent who was um, stepping forward um, for that. And you're here. Do you want to um, introduce yourself? I know, I know you have before again, but uh, again. Hi, my name is Marcella Dent. Um, I'm new to the Planning Commission, but um, just with, in discussion with the current members, this is general practice, and, and in the past it's um, been helpful for, I think, us and CVRPC to have a member of the Planning Commission be um, appointed to uh, the Central uh, Planning Commission, and so um, I have the availability and interest to do it, and um, I can try to answer questions <laughs> if you have any. Any questions? Uh, Donna. I'm pleased that you've volunteered. <laughs> I would hope, do you think you could make time to come back to the council or send like emails? I'm on the Regional Planning Transportation Task uh, Advisory Committee and I try to give the council like a report once a month. Mm -hmm. And even if you could just email me, but I would love for us to be in more communication personally since I'm on the task force. Yeah. And likewise for the council to hear more about what the Regional Planning Commission is doing. Sure, so yeah. That's a doable? That sounds doable. If there's interest, okay. I'm happy to, yeah. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Jack. Um, I was kind of surprised the way this came to us. Is it, has it historically been the practice that the Planning Commission makes this uh, nomination to the Regional Planning Commission? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. And I'm happy, to, happy that we have people who are willing to do not only the work they're doing on the planning commission, but extra work, <laughs> signing up for another commission. <laughs> Don't scare her away. <laughs> right. All right, is there a motion uh, regarding this appointment? I move we appoint uh, Marcella Dent to the Regional Planning Commission. Second. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you so much. All right, uh, Confluence Park. So I know uh, Roy and Ricarda are here to talk about that, so welcome. And um, I know uh, Donna was at the presentation last night as well as I. Yes. Yeah. Is there, how hard would it be to get the, the PDF on here? I don't know, what do you think? Do we know? Do you have a um, thumb drive? Do you have a thumb drive? No. Mm -hmm. So I, do, I don't, it doesn't. That answers my question. It is not necessary. I just thought if okay. we wanted to have the design up there, but sure. I think we're good. Um, so, Ricarda Erickson with the Vermont River Conservancy, and we have been.
contracting with Malone and McBroom, and Roy Schiff is the water resources engineer with Malone and McBroom, who have been doing a conceptual design for the Confluence River Park. The Confluence River Park, as you may know, is the proposed park at the confluence of the north branch and main stem of the Winooski Rivers on the city-owned transit center lot. And we have had a series of public meetings and input sessions, and I don't feel I need to go into depth now, but I'm happy to answer any questions about the background and the process. But what we are here um, for tonight is to um, present to you this um, concept E, the, the final conceptual de design of the Confluence River Park, and to ask you to commit city staff and potentially resources to move into the next phase. And this is what's considered 10% um, complete in a design completion spectrum. And we would like the next phase would be to get to 75% completion. And we would like to, Vermont River Conservancy would like to work with city staff to look into funding opportunities to fund that second phase and look into funding the construction of this park. So that is our ask to you, is to have the city commit to the second phase, to commit to moving forward with the Confluence River Park by um, having city staff work in collaboration with the Vermont River Conservancy, and to commit to an yet-to-be-defined amount of funding to put into as perhaps a match for this second phase. Can I add to that? Sure, please. Um, I was thinking about this the other day in terms of um, the traffic uh, study that we just did where there was an outside consultant that came to us and they had a plan and some visions and then there was sort of this question about like would we be a like is is this the vision is this the where we want to go and I think if this is sort of like our as a as a city do we want to commit to this as the vision mm -hmm. um, and and all that it entails to try to move forward with that vision um, knowing that we've got some fundraising to do um, I hope that captures it also yeah. Right. Or is great. it maybe an addendum yeah. to that, to what you said? Yeah, if I yeah. could just yeah. um, add one minute. Um, so I've been a resident of Montpelier for 15 years on the Conservation Commission, was really excited to work on this project professionally. Um, but actually the most exciting part was we've, we've been for about a year doing outreach with all the city um, departments, commissions, and the public. We've done public survey. And this is the fifth concept that have slowly whittled its way down. So we feel pretty good about the main elements in this design. People want ADA access. People want to recreate in the river in the future when the water quality is better, want a performance space, want the bike path integrated, canoe access, and so on and so forth. So um, the data and the design and the initial work and the planning are really there. And you know, as Ann said, I think um, adopting this as the concept that the public sort of put forward um, and, and uh, with guidance from most of the departments in the city that will have an interest or of some, some vested interest in this, in this area is exciting and hopefully you'll support that and move forward with us. <laughs> Any questions from the council? Comments, etc.? Done. Well, I'm very excited about this and have been to several of your presentations and know that you have listened and you have incorporated things and you're still listening. People wanted to get into the next stage last evening. I'd like to make a motion that the city accept concept D as our vision for our river parks and a way to lead forward. Are we calling this one D? E. E. Oh, E. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm looking at. Okay. You, you may. Concept E, John Concept Odom. <laughs> um, is there a second? Second. Did you want further discussion? Um, Ashley. I guess I'm just curious. So uh, the commitment is, I, I would hazard a guess, probably there. 
Um, in terms of you know what the next thing is, I can't imagine all you need from us is commitment because if that's all you needed, like that would be, <laughs> this would have been done years ago. Um, so what practically are your next steps if the council were to approve this concept? Yeah. So um, I, I'll speak from the Vermont River Conservancy, and then then Roy can talk about the design. But the next steps would be for. Um, Vermont River Conservancy to work with city staff and I imagine Kevin Casey or a fundraising um, uh, staff member to look into funding opportunities. We are at the point now where it is, if we want to continue the process, we need the municipality to um, commit to this project. There are funding opportunities that only the municipality can apply for, that a nonprofit cannot or there are funding opportunities that need to, show, to demonstrate that um, strong level of partnership. Mm -hmm. So in order to move this project forward, that's the level of commitment we need to, to, for the city to say this is a, a city project. It doesn't mean you are committing to any specific design. We are not near shovel ready, nor does it say is it a level of a commitment to a certain um, dollar amount for the final project? It is simply a commitment that, yes, as a city, we are moving forward. We want this. We want to do our best effort to make it happen. And it's um, fair to say that um, the design yet can still shift potentially um, based on that further research and um, as we as we as we go along, things may change. Right. So in the design world, Roy, I don't yeah. know if you want to speak to that. Yeah, I mean, Ricardo mentioned this. So this is a concept design. Um, it's really about programming and asking people what they wanted to do in this space, and doing feasibility work. Can we get ADA accessibility to these two rivers? And the answer is yes. And here's a concept to do that. Um, but there will be a lot of design moving forward. Actually, the bulk of it, what are the materials this thing's made of? What local artists will put a sculpture where? And, and those are the, the things that all have to be hashed out in a, in a next phase or two of the project before a couple years down the line this thing gets built and we have this great park sitting um, in the center of our city. Donna. Well, the term you used last evening is this is only 10% of the design work. And I purposely said vision and concept in the motion. And I wanted to separate directing staff to work with them just to keep it a cleaner motion. But I do know we need to then do that. But that's well, how, why know, I did the motion. If it becomes a project that's in our pipeline, then yep. that's what we'll do. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, Jack. I think this is great. I think over. You know, historically, in cities across the country, the waterfront and the lakefront has been an industrial uh, wasteland. Setting. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say wasteland. I'd say it's been an industrial resource uh, because of how cities have developed. And and so, what we've seen, you know, at the Burlington waterfront in a lot of other places, including here now, is the idea of taking that uh, industrial. Uh, setting and something that's really like not at all attractive or uh, inviting to people and turning it into something that people want to spend their time on and so I'm, I'm really glad to see this I know a lot of people think of state and Maine as the center of town but I actually think of this location as the center of town in a, in a different way in a certain sense and um, it's a very small parcel, but it's really important. I'm really excited about this. Uh, so wait, so there's been a motion and a second? There was a second. Yes. Um, any further discussion? Any comments from the public? OK. Uh, all right, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? OK, thank you for all of your work and uh, looking forward to next steps. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You want this? The big one. Do you want to take a break? <laughs> <laughs> so are we going to take a break for now? Would you like to take a break? Thank you. Well, I mean, I'm going, but it's nice. <laughs> would, anybody else, would anybody else like to Okay, let's take a five-minute break. This is, I think, a good opportunity to take, take a little break. Okay, so we are going to come back from our break. 
Um, so we are on to reviewing the Chapter 7 uh, ordinances. Um, <laughs> so this is the fourth public hearing. So I'm going to open up the public hearing um, regarding Chapter 7. Um, and I have only <laughs> one comment. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, staff. Yes. <laughs> um, my one comment um, was, oh, I'm looking at chapter eight. I need to look at seven. Okay, under 7-1, decaying matter. I, uh, I'm so glad that we uh, are allowing um, composting, vermicomposting, uh, pit composting, trench composting. Um, oh, one question I had was, um, is, is this a thing to have a government-sanctioned composting bin or vessel? I know we talked about that last time. I just don't know where we landed on that. Um, and also, um, technically speaking, maybe I'm just speaking as a science nerd, but uh, decaying material still would incorporate like um, the fermentation of things. Um, so I'm also I'm worried about that we're banning fermented um, stuff. Yeah, well, you know, uh, kimchi, sauerkraut, uh, etc. I'm all for banning those things. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's nasty. Home kombucha. So, so, Bill, are you including, just, just out of curiosity, are you including beer in your all for banning them? <laughs> it's also all right. fermented. <laughs> no wine making. <laughs> as long as distilling's good. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't. Uh, that's, that's well, could we just say decaying material parentheses except for, for fermentation purposes? Sure. Well, what were your added words, Bill? Except for fermentation. Except for fermentation purposes. Oh, okay. Decaying material parentheses yeah. except for fermentation. Yes, okay. that would be fine. That would, that would make me happy. And Not then, including kimchi and sour. Because <laughs> we're definitely banning those. <laughs> uh, Jack. A couple of things. Should it be clarified even further to say except materials being fermented for human uh, consumption? Well, that's yes. what I was trying to get that, at. So I, yeah, I like that. that okay. Yeah, good point. Yeah, that's, that's fair. So so I, I move to amend it, to amend 7-1 to include those words. Second. Uh, so this is just about... Um, uh, amending this part of it, um, to be clear. So, uh, further discussion. And, and do you have that, John? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. Um, and, yes, Jack? Did you have something else? Well, I just was circling back to this idea of uh, government-sanctioned um, composting bins or vessels, but I I don't mean to make a big deal out of that. I don't, don't know... If, if we did check in on whatever that means, um, great, but if not. I think that's a good point because, you know, I've got one of those compost tumblers in my yard. I never went to the government and asked if it was okay. So if you stick your head deep inside, maybe there's a seal on it from <laughs> a government agency. <laughs> But I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I sort of wondered if that was referring to, um, I mean, at, at a certain scale, it becomes uh, government uh, regulated, or at least state regulated, but I assume this is smaller than that, so. Can we just strike it? Well, yeah, Don. <clears throat> what, what do you call the larger ones? The condominium near me has a large composting bin, much bigger than the personal use. And I presume it's regulated through it's through the trash hauler. So I, I assume there's regulations there. Yeah. So, and if it's big enough for the state to sanction, maybe that's... Yeah. I would okay. be f for just striking the words government sanctioned. 
unless there's a good reason to include it. I move we strike those words. <laughs> Second. Uh, okay, for the, uh, Lauren? Just as long as we're not somehow inadvertently making it illegal to have a like composting facility here. Does this, do the other words, pit or trench composting or verm, I don't, or verma comp so now we're only allowing personal use composting if we delete that whole thread? Or are we just taking out the word? A composting bin or vessel? So I mean, I might say like, or government sanctioned facility. Those I, are, I think, I regulated. Sure. So I think, it, maybe I misunderstood the thrust, but I think what I was intending with my motion was to strike the two words, government sanctioned, so that now it will read, um, this section shall not apply to the maintenance of a composting bin, bin or vessel, bitter trench composting or vermicomposting for personal use, plus the language about, wait, no, that's something somewhere else. That's a decaying matter. That's earlier in the section. Excuse me. Um, I, yeah. I read that to say, does, like the big facilities, it's not a bin or vessel, and then mm -hmm. the rest of it is all qualified by for personal use. So I think we might be mm -hmm. taking out the ability to have, I mean, it's usually just like slabs of concrete, and there's piles, and they do all this management to it. It's not. Okay. Hmm. So what if, what if we said, um, what if we just moved that part? So, um, so that this section shall not uh, apply to the maintenance of a government sanctioned uh, composting, bin or vessel, trench, uh, pit or trench composting, vermicomposting for personal use or other state sanctioned uh, composting facilities. Would that work for you? Hmm. No? It's okay. <laughs> while, we're on, yeah. while we're on that sentence, um, I'm a little concerned with the uh, semicolon before or vermicomposting that it's not clear to me whether for personal use applies to all the items on, in that list or just vermicomposting for personal use, which I don't think is what's intended. You think it's intended to be personal use as applied to all of it? That's what I assume. Okay. Uh, Don? But these big bins aren't for personal use. The hauler takes them away and sells them to a composting company. Yeah, and I don't know what pit or trench composting is, uh, whether by its nature that is something that's not for personal use. All the ones I've seen have, they're more the homemade jobbies that Lauren was talking about. You dig it in and hmm. put leaves over it and sawdust. And the thing is, I think you can also have a bin that's not just for transfer. You can have a bin that's, um, you know, that's... That like, doesn't work? Yeah, but that, uh, like you were describing, Jack, you know, the, the tumbler, that kind yeah, of the thing. Yeah, the tumbler. Yeah. Um, I would we consider that a, a bin, maybe, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you have any suggestion about that, Jack? Uh, um... What if you put an and before pit, and it separates the larger bin vessels to the smaller that are related to personal household use? Well, or we could, um, if what we want to allow for personal use is pit or trench composting and vermiculture or vermicomposting, if we were to uh, change that semicolon to a comma, then I think it would be clear that for personal use applies to all the three, all those uh, items, pit or trench composting or vermicomposting. So I move we change the semicolon after composting and before or to a comma. Um, hang on, before we do that, there was a motion. Yeah, I move to strike uh, oh, government sorry. sanctioned. Sorry about that. Government yeah. sanctioned. Okay. Um, was there a second for that? Nope. Oh. There's, nope. I yeah. Was yeah. Oh, sorry. So, uh, uh, Lauren? 
I'm just thinking about like our restaurants who have to do this. That's not personal use, right? But they have to compost now, so. <laughs> Maybe but, we, but they're all under state regulations what they do with their compost. That's why to me the government sanction is important because it says there are certain bins and vessels that are composting that aren't for personal use that should be allowed. I don't know if those are the right words, but it's a that. But there is the bigger yeah. bins and vessels. I could also picture striking just for personal use. But I don't know. How about this? <laughs> <laughs> maintenance of composting of a composting bin or vessel in compliance with state law or regulation. So it doesn't mm -hmm. suggest that the government is actively blessing your personal bin, but it uh, suggests that in order to not be covered by town regulation, you need to be complying with some higher regulation. Is that a friendly amendment? So I would um, move to amend the, your, your motion. Uh, so I can accept that amendment? How does that work? I don't think so. I think, well, I, I would. Officially, but well, if, <laughs> if there's no objection to an amendment, then it oh, can okay. be the chair can rule it amended. OK, so there's no objection. There's no objection. objection. So we're going to. Consider that um, as part of your the original motion. Okay, thank you, thank you for um, that clarification. Um, further discussion on that. Um, uh, so we don't need to, do we need to have it read back, or are we feeling okay about it? Uh, changing the language to maintenance of a composting bin or vessel in compliance with state law or regulation. And striking the rest of it, or or no, keeping the rest of it. We, yeah, keeping the rest of it, but then. My motion will be in order after that. Oh, okay, great. Okay, um, great. Further discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and Jack? I move in the last uh, line of 7 2 to uh, change the uh, semicolon after composting to a comma. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? OK, great. That that was the only flag I had on that one. And, and oh, so uh, do we need to approve the whole thing now as amended? Yes, chapter 7. Chapter 7, it's very exciting. Don't we have to close the public hearing oh, yeah. before you do Comments that? Oh, yeah, from the public? <laughs> Thank you. Good, Jack. Good. It's good, it's good. <laughs> Comments? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we accept ordinance chapter seven as amended. Final reading. Okay, and I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, I thought you did. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay. And uh, I just want to make sure I actually said that. Um, so there's motion, and there's a second. 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 Okay. Further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thank you. Chapter seven done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Chapter 8. This is the second public hearing on Chapter 8. I'm going to open a public hearing. Uh, Lauren. Um, section 8.1. Did we in here, we had talked last time about cats, and I don't think it's been addressed. Um, so I think we are still outlying cats running at large in our city if we do this. The cat lobby's gonna <laughs> come out. <laughs> you thought the dog lobby was real. <laughs> cat lobby. So I. Flagging that. Fair. So, would, do you have any suggestions about that, or should we just, is, you know, flag it for a future reading? This would be the last one. I mean, this is theoretically the second reading, but... Yeah, we did four on the last chapter. <laughs> how, how high... Just saying. <laughs> Hope springs eternal. We could just say except cats. We could just, yeah. could just say except yeah. cats. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think if we said uh, no person owning or who has custody and control of any domestic animal 
except cats, <laughs> shall permit such animal to go at large, loose or unrestricted in any public street, etc. Is there a motion? I move that we change the language okay. in Second. that way. Rolls off the tongue. Yes, Don. I just have to make a statement because I have neighbors in my condo association who would like us to contain cats because they are a nuisance in your flower garden. That's just for the record. I, I, and also, they kill a lot of songbirds. I hear. Yes. Keep your cats indoors. Maybe. I don't know. I don't own a cat. I should <laughs> give advice. Okay. Um, all right. So there's a motion and a second um, for the discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, all right. So there's that. All cats, like tigers. <laughs> tigers. Bengals. Tigers. Domestic cats. Or just domestic cats. Domestic. Just to... Just to uh, I think, I think because Nick domestic cats. is in the beginning of I mean, it does say domestic animals. Yeah, just difficult. So, good question. Yeah. Okay, any, oh, uh, Jack? Yeah. Um, I just want to be sure, has, uh, has Section 8.3 uh, been discussed with uh, former Councillor Kruger to ensure that it uh, addressed her concern about <coughs> keeping swine? So we did not discuss this with Councilmember Kruger. It would address her personal issue because they have 75 acres. We discussed it internally um, about what to do, and, and we I explained this to Lauren the other day. Um, some of the other examples that we saw around the state tied it to zoning ordinances. So if you're in the rural district, it's okay, and if you're in you know the high residential district, it's not okay. But we concluded that it was really about the size of the lot and not about what district you could be in, you know, downtown and have a 10-acre lot. What's the problem? Or you could live in the district that Rosie lives in but still have a small lot that's right next to your neighbor. So we said, well, what's a reasonable size that you could have pigs and not bother your neighbors? And so we, you know, I, I would say there's no science to the 10 acres other than we picked it. Mike Miller has some farming background and suggested 10 acres, but I, you know, I don't seven or five or whatever I, you know I'm totally happy with it I just yeah I, I just so I just you know that was the goal was so that we wasn't prohibiting them across the city but it was saying you've got to have enough land to have them so my only thought about that was I I also recall the comment about um, singling out swine and uh, talking about how this fa really does factor in potentially for other um, large animals as well. I know pigs can be particularly stinky, but uh, you know any large animal sort of kept in a small enough space uh, could be problematic. Uh, so I I wondered about um, uh, uh, instead of calling it keeping swine, just keeping keeping large animals, and no person shall keep large animals um within the city limits unless you know etc uh and the reason i was using the word the phrase large animals is because that is used um later on um uh, in section uh eight it's new section six so um, new section eight six of burying dead animals um, in references Other large, animals. large animals. Yeah, so you know, thinking of that as a technical term, and actually, to be fair, um, this is maybe saying too much at the same time. But I wondered if, um, because we use the phrase or other large animal, if that shouldn't also be uh, defined. Um, Somewhere uh, under the in the definition section of eight two o two. Yeah. Um, so, just to to take that sort of one piece of time, how do you feel about changing it from swine to just large animals? I think the only question would be just some, would would a pig necessarily be a large animal? You know. If I look at these, if I if I owned a pig and I looked at this list of horse, ass, mule, ox, cow, bull, hog, I'd say, well, that yeah. my pig's a lot smaller than these things. <laughs> yeah, uh, Donna. Didn't move it past it. So. Moving past what? Yeah, you're still talking about the last. No, we're on eight. Right. Yeah. We're past seven, we're on eight now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To the except cats. Okay. Right. Yep. Cool, Donna. 
just for the record, as you were told before, I mean, likewise, a farm girl, pigs are no stinkier than oh, lambs. Stinky. Lambs have a horrible odor on their <laughs> their wool once they mature. Cows, all of them can be if they're not kept right. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of how much mud is allowed to accumulate. So Thank circumstantially, you. I mean, you could have llamas, I mean, and they can be even sort of nasty, <laughs> bless their hearts. So <laughs> maybe, I mean, you could say, list maybe some of the small ones. I would say farm animals such as swine, sh sheep, um, llamas, and, and then and larger, or just some examples. That's a good idea. But there's no way you're going to be able to list all of them. Yeah, fair. Because yeah. there's lots of different breeds. Anyway, I, I like the idea of uh, farm animals too. Yeah. It might make sense to. Well, it's a little complicated because we have this the 10 acre thing for swine, but then 84, which comes next, is talks about horses, but it says. Uh, shall not keep such stable in such place or in such manner as to be offensive to residents in the vicinity. Yeah, and that was actually the language we were trying to get rid of under the swine. It was because that was had been the standard before. So you're right, we didn't catch this. And I think um, it would be good to maybe either put an a, a acreage limit on that because the problem is who defines what's offensive. And that 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 was the problem we had with our most recent case was is it you know in whose opinion is it offensive and what what do you base that on? So, so why not yeah, why not put horses in there with the other yeah. farm animals and just name them such as horses. and and then strike all of eight four yeah because it is about how much space and, that they have to be kept and to be kept healthy and non smelly. And, and keep the uh, limitation on how much manure you can keep on the premises? Sure. Well, I, I just... <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, I've, I've sure. I've never had animals like this. Yeah, they do accumulate. <laughs> That's true for any manure of any of these animals. It's, yep. So we'd move that up to 8.3, that last section? Yeah, so... Got it. And do we want to require... 10 acres for horses, goats, lambs, sheep, uh, pigs, horses, cows, all of those, llamas. Uh, Glenn. So uh, not having a farming background in any way, um, except for a little vegetables, uh, 10 acres seemed large to me, even for swine. Uh, I feel like my sense of Montpelier lots, maybe five would would be would would feel more reasonable to me, especially if we're just piling all of the animals, all of the animal categories into to one category. Say you have to have five acres, at least five acres, to keep farm animals. Feels better to me than ten. It just at five acres and slope doesn't give you much mass, and you need mass. To keep them moving and keep the grass growing or the you know the green stuff growing. Hmm. So you think it should be ten? I, I don't know the perfect. I'm just looking at Montpelier and on all our slopes, and I know how little five acres can be when you're on a slope. And Michael's not here, so he could help me out. Mm -hmm. We can, I can do a Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, ten acres is approximately. Uh, well, let's see. No, never mind. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, it's not going to help. I, I, I'm aware that I'm not an expert on this, and I would be totally willing to go with the, the 10. Just struck me as large. If we get pushed back, we can always change the um, team. Google says it's a good mark of one to two acres per horse. I was also thinking I about that. I could Google every animal. <laughs> right, like if you, if you have one goat... Do you need 10 acres? You know, that seems like a lot. Um, You're not going to have one goat. <laughs> Goats don't like them. They're not going to have one goat? Okay. No, they don't like to be single. Fair enough. Um, well, so one possibility is that, um, I mean, we've suggested some changes for this language um, for now. Um, 
I, as I understand it, it and correct me if, if you um, have it differently, but um, I've got so far that 8.3 would say uh, basically keeping of farm animals or I mean, we had talked about large animals, but um, keeping of, yeah, go yeah. ahead, Lauren. I was, I was just looking up um, how Agency of Agriculture defines, so they have a livestock they term that is includes cattle, horses, sheep, swine, goats, camelids, fallow deer, and red deer. Is there a definition of livestock, if we would just want to echo? I, I like that, particularly because mm -hmm. it doesn't include chickens or ducks, and like a farm animal might include. Yeah, they have a whole separate poultry section, so. Okay, uh, are you okay with that, Donna? Mm -hmm. So, sure. livestock? I can email that to you, John. Okay, well actually with these, Bill usually keeps a running check, and generally you all tend to pass it as a Mm -hmm. So I just take down that motion, and, I, and I'll be posting them, so I'll get the details from the check office. Okay. So I think, think it would be a good idea, though, to list some such as, so people get an idea what you're talking about. Yeah, so I, I wonder take the such as from yeah. that statute. Yep. And I, uh, does it make sense to put it there or in the definitions? Eight two o two, or do you care? I feel like the definition eight two o two. That whole section is about dogs, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Never mind. Okay, yeah, so right, we'll put it in right here. Um, okay. All right, so it's keeping of livestock. And no person shall keep, sw um, shall keep livestock within the city limits uh, unless the livestock is... Livestock such as. Uh, so, oh, yes, thank you, such as, um, etc. Et um, uh, unless the livestock is kept on a parcel greater than 10 acres of land... And yeah. then at no time shall permit more than one half quart of manure to accumulate or remain uncovered outside said state. Or okay. maybe just say remain uncovered, period. Remain covered, yeah. Okay. That that feels okay to me. How do you all feel? Okay, great. And again, if people have uh, comments about that later, then we'll we'll deal with that later. But for now it's better than I think what we have here. So yeah. um, it's a big improvement. Okay, is there a motion regarding basically sections uh, 8, 3, and 8, 4? I move that we change them uh, as just now read by the mayor. Or Bill. <laughs> or Bill. Yeah. Second. Uh, okay, f uh, further discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. Any other comments on this? Um, I had one more comment to make, which was about Section 8.5, poultry, um, basically saying that uh, poultry has to be kept uh, in an enclosure. Um, I feel like I have, I mean, I can think of a place in town where chickens do sometimes run across the road. Uh, Why? And, uh, <laughs> great question. <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, I, I'm not sure that I, I, I don't have strong feelings about that. And if somebody wants to keep chickens sort of open, that's fine with me. But perhaps there's other reasons, like people's gardens or something. I'm not sure. Uh, Jack. I recall there was a time in the 80s or maybe in the 1990s where uh, there was a neighborhood kerfuffle over uh, someone's uh, chickens getting out and running all over the neighborhood um, over on uh, First Street or someplace like that. Um, and that might even be why we have that this in here right now. So. You know, my, my neighbors have chickens. They get out, they get in our yard, and uh, they get, go across the street, and we don't really care. And I think this really is going to apply if, if a neighbor does care, but it, it gives the city a handle to respond if the chickens are becoming a nuisance. Don? Well, e even the, the larger chicken f farm that's on the corner before the roundabout by Grossman's, you all know that one up on the hill? It's the one that a lot of chickens get out. But unfortunately, they also get in the road, and it's an accident happening. There's a lot of war around the field, but it's not totally enclosed. So they do make an attempt to keep them in. 
but it becomes a safety issue when they get in the road, that's all. Mm -hmm. Fair. I guess I'm happy to keep it then. Cool. I just, yeah. Now, we have a sheep farm on Berlin Street. Yeah. Do we know the Piva. acreage she has? I don't know. I have promised her that I'll go visit her sometime, um, so maybe I'll go and ask. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yes, because it's late. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if it needs a future adjustment, then yeah. we've done so many changes that we're going to have another hearing, okay. or not? Uh, well, I, did, I would assume we do that at another time. Okay. We probably. It seems like we're pretty much done with this one. Okay. Well. Okay. So find out, Glenn, and we'll. Yeah. 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 I'm happy to. Didn't want to forget about her. Okay, uh, is there a motion regarding Chapter 8? I move we schedule uh, another public hearing. Um, oh, I, don't, I don't think we need a public hearing. This is the second one. Oh, but we just said we were going to be taking it up again, I thought. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Glenn was going to check in, but we could potentially pass this now and then reopen it if we needed to. It's fine with me. Then I move we pass it as amended. Second. Further discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And I'm going to close the public hearing on that now that we've voted. <laughs> uh, and okay. So uh, strategic plan update. So I don't have a lot to offer. We, we gave you less information last time at your request. I'm going to confess that I did not do my updates before Jamie printed this and sent it out, despite her urging me to do so. <laughs> so some may be out of date. We do are using this, and as you can see, we've now converted it to the new plan. Um, we've, in part, just because of our staff changes and stuff, we're, we're not on that, and our, our new assistant manager is going to be the, the um, leader of this process so we expect we'll have more robust conversations on this in the future but certainly happy to answer any questions anybody has about any of the topics or the updates and we want to get more narrative update in there so people can read and see what's Donna? Well, I find this format more compressed and helpful thank you Um, I am uh, under the section uh, uh, regarding um, uh, overdoses and stats uh, from the. This is um, Close se to the end, seven point right? one. Um, I'm just I'm looking forward to having some data in there. Yep. I think that'll be great. I, I assume that's sort of a placeholder. Right. Yeah. And that's that's okay. Just uh, you know, at some point. Um. Okay. Any further any questions about uh, or comments on on this? Okay. Great. Well, thank you. And uh, all right, on to council reports. Um, Lauren, would you want to start? If not, well. Bounce over to Don. <laughs> I, I okay, have a parks Don, announcement. Okay, Don is going to go. So um, last time I talked about the Parkaloosa. This is the Enchanted Forest at Hubbard Park, October 12th, Saturday, 5.30 to 8. And it is marvelous. It has these different stations with little vignettes being acted out. It's lovely lit, and it's a fun time for families. So please go online, buy your tickets. And you can volunteer to help out, because there are about probably 12 to 15 stations, and they need volunteers there to help people, because it is dark. And we want to make sure people enter and exit without falling. The other thing is that just please, when you park on a street in the city, bring your rear view mirror on the driver's side in on the car. On Barry Street, those four inches make a huge difference, as it does downtown in Elm. So just take the time to bend your rear view mirror towards the car. And the other thing is a mild complaint. I'm still not doing well with the new setup, how to get to the city agenda. And I was not one to complain to Jamie. I've just given up. 
but it is very frustrating. Yeah. It's unpredictable, and particularly on my iPad, which the city wanted me to get in my <laughs> beginning years of the council, and it's just less and less friendly. So, one, if you're going to change something, it would be really helpful to be talked to, and then after you do it, to give us lessons. And then to finalize it, because it keeps changing. Right. Um, so that's well, my it, frustration. Yeah, it's been frustrating for all of us, and we're okay. trying to work with the vendor to for a solution. So. Yeah. Yeah, just real quick, uh, working on a draft of the Responsible Contracting Ordinance based on the comments submitted by city staff. Um, I, I think a lot of those suggestions were very reasonable, so I can make those changes. Also in touch with the city of Portland, Maine, which that ordinance was largely based on, to see if maybe the mayor could testify over the phone at our next meeting there. Um, and, and perhaps some people in city government just to see how it plays out, because uh, that would be most apples to apples for everybody to hear. So that's it. Thanks. Um, I wanted to, uh, I think I mentioned last meeting that I am planning to run a drawing class at the T.W. Wood Gallery um, for four Tuesday evenings starting October 8th and then the 15th, 22nd, and 29th, uh, running from 6.30 to 8.30, drawing from observation how to draw everything. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I encourage anyone who's interested to come, or if you know someone who should uh, have some fun with it, uh, send them to the T.W. Wood Gallery's website. Um, I really enjoyed working with the Wood uh, as a council representative to the board, and this feels like a good way to contribute to their program and have some fun. Um, otherwise, I'll be at Baguito's as usual tomorrow, 8.30 to 9.30. If anyone has anything else they want to talk about, I'm enjoying that as well. At one of our previous meetings on uh, ordinance review, we talked about uh, the various things that uh, our ordinances require licenses for, and I have a conversation scheduled next week with the S. Lauren Hibbert, who is the Director of Licensing at the Secretary of State's office, and we're going to be talking about approaches to licensing and why we might want or not want to license certain things, so I'll have that to add to our conversation when we take it up again. Um, just briefly, um, one event coming up that might be on Ann's report as well, but um, Wednesday, October 2nd, um, 6 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, here at City Hall, the Vermont Energy and Climate Action Network and Regional Planning Commission are organizing uh, a gathering of energy committees from around the region and looking at transportation, um, which I know there have been lots of great conversations on lately, so it uh, should be fun to hear about what some of the other um, other groups in our region um, are also thinking about and working on. Um, so again, that's October 2nd, 6 to 8.30 p.m. here at City Hall. Um, and then just wanted to, to share that the, um, the Energy Efficiency Ordinance Group is hard at work and plugging away, so really excited to bring forward um, that work along with Anne and uh, many others from the community that are diligently working on that. Um, and so just stay tuned. but. It, it isn't being forgotten. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm going to tack on to that just a little bit, which is to say that that um, working group is, uh, we met today, and uh, one of the outcomes of today's meeting was uh, that we're at the point where we're going to start to draft some language. Um, and just so you're aware, sort of thinking of breaking this um, it's up into two parts, one being ordinance language and one being like an implementation policy. The idea being the policy would be much easier to adapt or change um, as we learn and grow and that the ordinance would be more, um, uh, you know, sort of here's, here's the broad, um, broad requirements but referencing this policy as to the specifics. Um, so that's... Uh, sort of the frame of that. Thank you for mentioning the transportation thing on the second. Um, should be a great uh, event here. 
Um, also, just looking backwards a little bit, um, we had a great uh, Montpelier Drive Electric Week uh, a couple Saturdays ago. Um, it was a kind of a, a gray day, but I think we had a good turnout for the the weather. So that was that was awesome. I also just want to um, commend the um, uh, police department for um, just their their work and how they handled the strike last. Um, Friday, I know it was an inconvenience uh, for people, but everyone stayed safe, and um, that uh, matters. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and I mean, I guess uh, along with that, I'm so grateful for young people and adults raising that as an issue. It's like the most pressing issue of our time. Uh, so um, thank you for everyone who you know um, raised their voice there. Uh, and then uh, there was one other thing I was going to point out. Uh, nope, I, actually, maybe that is. Oh, yeah, there is one other thing. Um, a little further out, uh, October 9th uh, is uh, the ribbon cutting, I suppose, for uh, the Taylor Street uh, projects. So uh, very exciting. There's going to be a little ceremony, I think, starting at 4. Uh, PM there, uh, so uh, you know, come out to that. Just, I, there's going to be, I think, some tours of the space uh, shortly thereafter. So, should be pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. So, that's the only other thing I, I wanted to put on everybody's radar. Um, Joe. I just want to apologize for getting testy. <laughs> I can handle the rambly motions I have for seven and a half years. Just don't ask me to read them back. Cool. Thank you. Uh, just first, uh, just got an update. It sounds like our water leak on Nelson Street is pretty bad. The street collapsed. So, um, yeah, there will not be water tonight and uh, pretty serious. Uh, we were fortunate in some, or lucky, I guess, that the crew was out tonight doing overnight paving work on stone cutters. We actually had a lot of people out in the area and were able to respond quickly. So it is shut off, but um, so it's pretty, pretty severe. Um, just quickly, I, I'd also like to comment one thing we, we people miss, so I'll play, I'll clean up. It was uh, We also had a really wonderful transportation forum last week oh, yes. here. I appreciate all the groups that participated and the people that were here. I thought it was interesting. We all learned a lot and uh, a lot of exciting options coming forward. Um, just not to get into it too deeply, but with regard to the comments at the beginning of the meeting, um, and, and about city center, we actually did look at the file. We don't find any requirement that city center had to have public bathrooms or parking. We re we looked through the entire file. We reported that to the individual who requested it, and the law says you either um, that you can make it available to them. And so we said either if you want to pay the cost of this huge file, um, or you're welcome to come in under business hours and look at it. And, so um, we have not denied him access at all, and we did check both the land records and the files to see if there was any requirement that somehow we were missing. We didn't see it, but just thought people would want to know that there was more to it. But Bill, what about the recent court case that said you didn't have to pay for public records in Vermont? Yeah, well, we haven't got yes. It had to, it had to do with the paying for the. Um, the P police and police, thank you, the body cams. Okay, okay. Um, so it didn't and, hit and all the and rest. That was, so I, you know, the current law says that actual okay. direct costs. That you I know it does. Apparently, you can't yeah. charge for. Sound to me like you know your own time and those sorts of things. I, I, I don't know how that affects. Okay. But we're complying by saying no. That's you can see them. We're not withholding the records yep. from them. Okay. Uh, you know, this is we're not required in this case to make copies I, so if he wants to have them made that's great we'll have them made for him but that is beyond what we're required to provide okay um, so I just want people to be clear we were not in any way shape or form denying anybody a records request or or ignoring the issues raised so last thing is council meetings in October normally we would meet on the 9th and 23rd um, and I, you know, I popped that out in an email there. For, for the ninth, the issue is actually really is the third and the fourth. Uh, I'll be at town fair, uh, second and third, and then Jamie has a, a 
a, um, a training thing on the third and the fourth, so she won't be here. And that's our last week when we don't have any system meters. So we, you know, I'd, putting together the agenda for the ninth yeah. would be a struggle. We could probably get it out Monday, the seventh. So if that people are okay with that, that's the only problem with having it on the ninth. It's just getting everything together and out for the agenda. On the 23rd, I will not be here. I'll be away at my annual conference, and I, I booked all that before I do. Sue is leaving. Cameron will be working here, but it, as I said, it'll be her 16th day. I don't know if we want to put her up here then. She's pretty feisty, but we'll see um, how, how that goes. I don't know if you know. So, so we could either move that date or try to keep the agenda super light, I guess would be the other option. So I just want to throw those out, make sure you're aware that these conflicts existed and whatever works. I asked Ashley and she said she didn't really have a strong preference either way. Uh, but obviously if people do have conflicts, then there's no reason we can't hold them on the normal dates except there's snags with both of them. Well, I would like to have the ninth on the ninth if possible and I'm willing to have the material come to me late Monday when the staff can get it ready. Okay. I'm on the same page. Yeah, I hate to rush you on that, Bill, but I think I'm on that too. That's fine. Lord? As long as people don't, buy, as long as people, there's pre understanding that it'll come out Monday, then we're good. I mean, if that was the. Late Monday, the I mean, yeah. five o'clock. Well, we, we, we get a lot of it advanced, yeah. done in advance anyway, but that's fine. Okay, so. Um, so I'm staying on the Lord, yeah, ninth is better. This was my first time I was going to say, I would need child care for the <laughs> if it was the 16th. So we can avoid that, having to Okay, so we we're going to keep it on the ninth then and just uh, know that we're yeah. going to get our packets a little late. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and then the 23rd, what do you... Moving to the 30th. 30th is fine with me. It's fine, yeah. Okay. You and won't I, see I think me because I'm going to be at the Zen Buddhist Monastery wow. for two weeks. Oh, right well, then. And then you won't be testing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll be one with the whole room. Well, you'll well, just, you'll just bring back one of those sticks. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the 23rd was the day before Thanksgiving anyway, right? Well, this is October 23rd. Oh, it was October. I'm yeah, well, we had a, another... Mind. We've already, Jack did we've already bring planned up. to move the November, oh, okay, December meetings because of the holidays. I'm, I'm, thank you. Yes. Ooh, definitely. It's only... It's not even 9 o'clock. It might be the Zen Buddhist Thanksgiving. Well, I don't know. No, yeah, but maybe. Jack did bring up the Thanksgiving, yeah, which would be good to look at now we, well, we, already could. we have always scheduled that. If we haven't... Yeah, I guess we haven't officially done it, but typically we, we meet the third Wednesday, which would be the 20th instead of the 27th because that is the night before Thanksgiving of November, we, they usually come, usually when we give you your budget schedule, those are in there. And the same thing, okay. obviously, with um, December, the fourth one is actually the 25th this year. So unless you Let's all want to meet on, meet on <laughs> Christmas night. Um, awesome. That could be great. So you know, be a small crowd. <laughs> before, we, before we um, leave it, though, uh, so are we okay with moving to the 30th of September instead of the 23rd of October? Oh, my goodness. We have you totally you know confused. I mean. Yeah, I'm sorry. 30th of October instead of the 23rd. Yes, sure. that's a good. Okay, sorry. Whew, okay. And then we would be the 13th good. and 20th of November instead of the 13th and 27th. Yes. And we would be the 11th and 18th of December instead of the 11th and 25th. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm just putting this in my calendar. Can you say the December ones again? 11th and 18th. 11th and 18th. Great, perfect. And that's consistent with our practice with what we've the done. last yep. 25 years. Okay. Feeling set. Feeling set. Yeah. Well, thank for you for accommodating that on the 23rd and 30th. That's great. We get talking about December, and all I can think is budget. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's, Let's go back to September. <laughs> okay, I think that concludes our regular business. So um, without objection, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.